the towers. Uh, yeah, coach, congratulations on the win. Well, it, put, put it into perspective. It was a historical performance by Severe and a, a really good basketball game for your team. Yeah, I didn't even, I had no idea on the triple double till after the game when John Bateman told me I had no idea. And uh, I really don't look at the stats during the game. You know, probably sometimes I should, but I had no idea. <laughs> But that's phenomenal. And it's incredible when you think of how many years they've played basketball here, 116 years, and it's the first time it's ever happened. And really, he had a quadruple double because he had 10 deflections, which is important to me. And, Trum and Tumani had a triple double because he had the points and rebounds and he had 15 deflections. So we, we got a lot of uh, high level effort and energetic basketball from these guys. And they established early on that they were going to play with toughness. And like I said to them today, that the team that established the toughness was going to be the team that got their running game going the best because it, it's 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 hard to get your running game going consistently if you're taking the ball out of the net and so many times our guys got the rebound they got out ahead um we didn't have live ball turnovers too many of them in the first half it made a huge difference for us and um we got a lot of really good contributions kd did an excellent job you know pj made threes um ty fagan outstanding i mean so we had a lot of really good basketball and uh, they've done a great job bouncing back from the game the other day. And um, they just, they continue to show resilience. They just continue to get better every day. Yeah, Coach, obviously we're going to focus on uh, soccer. I didn't here. take your advice, by the way, either. I didn't take your advice with telling them we need to start the game down 12. <laughs> well, it, you know, obviously, it, you know, you, you talked about. You did spook me, though. You did spook me. You, you, you made me. You made it was like a nightmare. You me hearing you say that, thinking, you know, what if he's onto something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you know, kind of lost in S Savir's um, personal accomplishment was that this was you touched on it there a, a very decisive game uh, win over a really good team. So, what's the takeaway here? You you guys got more games to play. What what can you take out of this? Well, I think you take a lot. I mean, it's the way you prepare and it's, it's uh, the mindset. It's the ball movement. It's the staying connected defensively. It, it's the defensive rebounds. I thought Tamani establishing that he was going to be on that rim uh, rebounding wise, scoring wise, but most importantly with blocking the shots early and being the challenge, challenging them. That was very important. Um, it, it was a very efficient game. It was a very efficient game in many ways and, and against an outstanding team I mean he does a great job with them they've got the, they've got enormously talented players and um, we knew from playing them the first time that we had to be better defensively we had to be better taking care of the ball um, you can never come in and say okay we know we're going to shoot the ball so well but I thought even the threes we missed were open threes right they were good threes but again you've got to establish that you're going to play in the paint you got to establish that you're going to get to the foul line and that, that's what we're able to do up next let's have Anthony Dasher and then Mark Weiser Hey, Coach, uh, if my numbers are right, I believe this was only the 29th triple-double in SEC history. And uh, I just wanted all the years you've coached, uh, how many have you been a part of uh, your years at Indiana and Marquette? Well, I know we had a famous one when Dwayne Wade had yeah. it against Kentucky. Yeah. Um, I think I've had another one at Indiana. I, I, I don't know. I'm, so many times I'm not good with stats. Heck, I forget our own players' numbers sometimes, right? I mean, I just I – just, I don't zero in on that stuff, but – uh, for him to get a triple double um, this late in the season like that and to do it the way that he did it against a very, very good team like that, that says a lot about where he's at and what his future's like. And um, he did an excellent job. So I, I'm, I'm never real good at putting into perspective till I watch the film, but, but we wanted to come out and establish aggressiveness, toughness, physicality, and speed. And for the most part, these guys did that. Just one real quick follow-up, if you don't mind. It appeared, uh, you know, in, in warm-ups, the team was very, very loose. A lot of joking around, kind of, you know, kind of having fun even before the, yeah, the well, first it's, good, it's a good thing I don't come out for warm-ups then because I might yeah. not have read that right. No, they, they were confident. You know, we've had a good day. And, and we, had, we had a very short walkthrough. We spent more time watching film uh, this afternoon and showing what uh, we were capable of. And uh, so they were in a good frame of mind. You know, as long as it's, you know, loose without being giddy and, and loose without being careless. You know, that, that's a good way to play. So uh, I, um, now you got me. Now you got me. You're like Chip. Now I'm going to be wondering what's going on warm ups. I'm going to be wondering if we're too loose in warm ups. You guys keep getting in my head, man. All right. I'm, I can't. I just got to focus in on coaching the team. 
Tommy, you uh, rattled off uh, several contributors and, and they were all uh, underclassmen. How encouraging is that as you have that nucleus, uh, you know, as you build this thing? Well, I think, you know, I think you just live in the moment. I mean, I really do. I mean, you live in this moment and, and um, like I said, when this season ends, it, it's, it's the last time, you know, inevitably we'll all be together. Right. And there's no reason for that to have to happen anytime soon. And I thought our seniors uh, did a really good job as well, but, Again, it's, I don't, I don't think as much about next year. I don't think as much about the youth of it. If you're on the court right now, that means you can play and you can impact winning. And I could have easily played a few more guys tonight based on the way practices have been. I just didn't do it. But to me, um, bottom line is we, it, it all comes down to whatever five are on the floor that you're as connected to what you have to do defensively, be in a stance, be inactive. You're not guarding LSU in just a one-on-one, -on -one, even though we wanted our one-on-one -on -one defense to be good. And something that Severe said, another this is another assist to Severe. After the game the other day, um, and I make my points, I asked if anybody else has got anything. And he made a great point. He said, we have got to start taking pride in our individual matchups. And he said that. It's one thing for a coach to say it. It's, it's another thing for a player to say it, especially a, a leader player, a, le a player of leadership. So like, that became, you know what, we're going to make sure over these next two days that we understand how important it is that we can guard these guys one-on-one -on -one without overhelping. And it's a lot easier said than done, trying to guard Trent and Watford and Cam Thomas and Javante Smart and Days. I think one of the keys is that Days only got two points. And we know he's such a factor because when they win, he gets 15. When they lose, he averages six. He's such a factor. You know, they, and, and um, you can't sleep on anybody that he puts in, but he's got four bona fide guys that you've got to be sure of every possession and that's not easy so it's got to be individual defense mixed with a collective mindset of how you're going to show help you know play the ball and see your man and and um for the youth to be able to do that is a good sign that they continue to pick this up and understand what we're trying to get done defensively up next let's have tori heck and then augusta stone coach you've always said you're not a big numbers guy and like you even just said you didn't realize until you walked off the court what some of you had done tonight but what can you take from those numbers and what do you use them for from a coaching standpoint? Which part? Uh, just when, when the guys get records like this, like those couple tonight oh, or I just think, the I think stats that's, in general. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think that's, that, it just goes to, first off, it's very, very rare. So it's never going to sink in when it happens immediately, but it's also a very profound thing. And, and it, to have somebody accomplish that at such a young age, at such a prestigious league against a really, really good opponent like that. So I think it's just, it, it's all part of the experience, whether you, you're coming back from a deficit, whether you're holding a lead, uh, whatever it is, every experience you go through should help prepare you for the next one. And I think when, you, when, when he, he has shown that when he's rebounding the ball, he had seven rebounds against, uh, against um, uh, Missouri last week. When, when we understand that we've got to get guard rebounds because we're not going to over Matt or be, we're not going to be over, overly physical with the majority of these front lines that we see. So we've got to be physical with them. And that may mean we don't get the board, but we've got to have a guard slide in there to do it. And Severe understands that. And um, I think the, the way you get it in a win uh, and then the way that he did it defensively with his activity too, that, that says a lot. Hey coach, congrats on the win tonight. Um, I want to know how much did creating that positive momentum in the first half, you know, help, catapult and set the tone for the rest of the night you know it's kind of opposite of what's been happening with falling behind you know getting that ahead just how much should that do for y'all I think it did a ton because the way we did it and and um they did it on the defensive end and we stayed locked in you know the baskets they were making for the most part they had to earn them you know they, they were not we were not giving them baskets we they, they had to earn the baskets and uh, but but a lot of times we we're getting the defensive board and we were off and we were making the next pass we were getting behind the defense uh, we got our running game going. We got some easy buckets. You know, we got dunks and layups, which I think is really, really important. You know, the threes build confidence, but the dunks, the layups, the getting behind the defense, that builds leads. And, and that's, that's what you have to get. And uh, I thought we took a few too many threes early on, so I wanted to make sure that we were getting the thing established to go through the paint because we just know we're going to need that bonus. We've got, we've, got to be, we've got to be pro. Now, that's a number I do know. I know all the time where we're at. Uh, in conjunction with with how far we've got to go to get to the bonus, and I know when when, when we when we're successful, if we get to it early enough. So those kind of numbers I pay attention to during a game. I, I don't study the numbers till really after the game. But bottom line, momentum is always up for grabs, and these guys did a really good job of of grabbing momentum and not letting it go. 
All right, and the last two questions, let's have it from Palmer Toms and Ryan Curley. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned the guard rebounding there. Uh, for someone of severe size, what does that say about him, you know, his aggressiveness and his toughness to get 10 rebounds tonight? Well, I think it says, I think it says a lot. I mean, I think when you, when you, uh, and he had 11, which is, I'm just looking at it now, he had three offensive boards. You know, I think it says a lot about being in position, right? Like you're guarding and you're in position. And um, he's a tough kid. I mean, he's a tough young man. I mean, he's, he's got an incredibly bright future. There's no doubt about it. And so when you, when you do, when you play that way and you show your level of toughness, when a point guard gets a rebound, it skips a whole step of the break. There's no outlet anymore. You know, now you're going, you're, you're speeding up the floor. Now you're throwing the ball ahead to somebody that's in scoring position or somebody that can make one more pass. That makes all the difference in the world. And when you can skip that step of getting an outlet pass to your point guard because the point guard grabbed the ball, it's a big deal. Hey, Coach, I know you're always focused on winning the next game that's in front of you, but I was wondering if you guys had made any progress on adding another game or rescheduling Texas A&M if that was in the cards. Well, that's, that's not up to us. That'll be up to the league. And we'll, learn, we, we'll play another game next week, but we'll learn later in the week who that's going to be. But certainly we plan to play. And I don't think there's any reason that we wouldn't, you know, unless something happened with COVID with somebody else. But we'll wait for the league to tell us, and, uh, and we'll go, right? Whether it's here, whether it's on the road, whatever it is, we'll be ready to roll. All right. Thanks so much. Thank Coach. you. Have a good night.